A handful of Generation 4 fighters like the Su-30 and MiG-29 incorporated thrust vectoring. But not the American F-15C. The Air Force made up for this by perfecting the technology in the F-22 Raptor. As the Raptor turns, the aircraft's onboard computer makes tiny adjustments of the thrust nozzle to improve the turn radius of the aircraft. Everybody talks about thrust vectoring as if there's some magic switch you push or something like that. There's not a light that comes on that says thrust vectoring's working. And so it's blended very smoothly. The pilot has no idea when it's moving. And so it's just effortless. The airplane flies and points and does what he wants it to do. Thrust vectoring seamlessly allows the Raptor pilot to turn tighter circles while maintaining airspeed. Soon, he's in position on his enemy's tail. But suddenly, a second Rafale crashes the party. The enemy gains a faint lock on the F-22 and fires. A missile warning blares in the Raptor pilot's helmet. If I'm looking back over my shoulder, I see a puff of smoke and a missile flying my way. There are certain uh, evasive maneuvers that I will take as a fighter pilot to try and uh, defeat that missile. It's a combination of maneuvering and, uh, and chaff and flares. The F-22 easily breaks the missile lock, but the maneuver has put him out of position. Now he must work with his fellow pilots to turn the tables. The scenario where I'm in my fighter and I'm in a world of hurt and I need some help. My buddy who I've been training and flying with for five years, that guy or that gal will stop at nothing to put, come and put their life on the line to save mine. Voice communications between pilots are handled by the Raptor's integrated avionics system. The second Raptor quickly comes to the aid of his fellow pilot. It takes years of training and being exposed to different scenarios and figuring out how you're going to um, handle those scenarios and still come away alive and having achieved your tactical objectives. The first Raptor breaks hard into his opponent, forcing him in the direction of the second Raptor. The second Raptor locks on with his heat-seeking AIM-9X Sidewinder missile. The AIM-9X was approved for full-rate production in 2004 and should be fielded at any time. Many details are classified, but it is known that it will possess a type of thrust vectoring technology called jet vane control, which gives it much greater agility over its predecessors. The AIM-9X can also lock onto targets up to 60 degrees angled off its nose, known as an off-bore sight shot. The F-22 easily gains lock and fires. The Rafale is obliterated. But the first F-22's not out of the woods yet. Another enemy missile rockets toward him. He breaks, releasing flares. The missile lock is broken, but the enemy is still on his tail. He must do something drastic. The American will perform a dazzling maneuver called Pugachev's Cobra, named for a Russian test pilot who first performed it. He'll use thrust vectoring to force his tail down and his nose up. His airspeed will plummet, forcing the Rafale out in front of him. A move like this could easily get out of control for a Generation 4 aircraft equipped with thrust vectoring. But the Raptor's computer-aided flight systems will ensure the pilot stays in command. The Raptor pilot pops his nose up. 
his airspeed drops. The Rafael fights to stay in the turn, but has no chance. He shoots past the Raptor. The move demonstrates perfectly how pilots of the future will use technology to exert far greater control over their aircraft. Everything he does is completely under control. He's controlling every motion. None of it's ballistic. He can stop those things at any point he wants and turn it around and go the other way. The Raptor gains lock and fires a Sidewinder. The missile hits home. The rest of the enemy force flees south. The Raptors could pursue, but they choose not to. In air-to-air -air combat, the United States Air Force believes the F-22 will remain dominant for at least the next 20 years. It is unlikely that another country will develop a Generation 5 aircraft to challenge it anytime soon. Why haven't they built them? Well, because it's hard. They're not easy to build. It takes very advanced companies, very advanced teams to put them together. It, it is attention to every detail. The F-22 may have control of the air, but historically, the greatest threat to a fighter pilot comes from the ground. The greatest threat now to really any of our platforms is that very highly sophisticated and integrated air defense system. Americans have already encountered integrated air defense systems over Bosnia and Iraq. An IADS can be implemented much more readily than a top-of-the-line air force, which requires billions of dollars and a top-tier pilot training program. An IADS, composed mainly of radar networks and surface-to-air missiles, have been the main line of defense in most Middle Eastern countries for decades. And those are the systems that can find you, potentially, and track you and launch on you from 100 miles away. That is a pretty impressive brick wall that a country can put up if they don't want you to come into their territory. So you've got to find new ways to get up to that wall and knock the thing down. In the future, these radar stations will be harder to find and destroy. Surface-to-air missiles will be longer range and more accurate. A strike mission against any country equipped with an advanced IADS will put the pilot of a Generation 5 fighter to the ultimate test. July 22nd, 2019. In a hypothetical combat scenario, a joint strike force of American and British planes soar over the Caspian Sea. On this night, a mission to strike suspected uranium enrichment sites will take them deep into a country fortified with an advanced integrated air defense system. At the tip of the spear will be a formation of four F-22s escorting 12 F-35 Lightnings, the Joint Strike Fighter. The F-35 began its development process in 1996. The design mandate called for a versatile aircraft that could smoothly move between ground attack and air superiority roles. The F-35 was meant to replace other strike aircraft like the F-15E, F-16, and F-18. It is hoped it will be the world's premier strike aircraft for the next 30 years. The only airplane out there that the F-35 is going to have any trouble with, would even be parity with it, would be the Raptor. Nobody else will be close. With a single powerful engine, the F-35 tops out at Mach 1.6, but it lacks supercruise and thrust vectoring. Still. 
it incorporates the same stealth characteristics as the F-22 and can be every bit as lethal in air-to-air -air combat. F-35 is more optimized for both the air-to-air -air and air-to-ground kind of role that it's involved in. A little less maneuverable than an F-22, but certainly comparable to all the fourth-gen aircraft. It is a single-engine fighter, carries about 18,000 pounds of gas on it, so it uh, will be able to fly at very, very significant ranges on a single engine. In a future air war, the F-35 will perform a variety of functions, as opposed to the F-22, which is specialized for air-to-air -air combat. The F-35's airframe is easily and cheaply adapted for many types of missions. Variants are already being built. One is an Air Force mission from fixed base. One is for the Marine Corps version from L-class carriers as well as austere basing. And the third is for the U.S. Navy, which lands on the large CV-class carriers. It's going to be a very, very interesting change to aerial combat when you have stealth fighters deployed from ships where the enemy really doesn't know where they are. So you think about a 600-mile radius based anywhere around the globe that's 70% water really is a game-changing kind of aircraft. The F-35, as well as the F-22, use an incredibly powerful radar called Active Electronically Scanned Array, or AESA radar. AESA is another key technological advantage that Generation 5 aircraft will have in a dogfight of the future. It can stare at a very wide picture and give you a very good sense of what your targets are, both on the air and in the ground. It's a very big improvement over previous radars, which were mechanically scanned, meaning that they had to move back and forth, and they did it much slower. And so the pilot didn't have as clear or as instantaneous as a picture as he would today with um, the newer AESA radar. Looming before the strikers is a formidable electronic fortress. The IADS of the next 10 years will be incredibly lethal. Surface-to-air missiles will carry onboard radar, essentially becoming fire-and-forget weapons, unlike their predecessors, which were controlled from the ground. Radar systems will become smaller and more mobile, making them harder to locate and destroy. So the first wave of an attack would probably involve your very stealthy vehicles. Why would you use these in the first wave? Because stealth in essence, shrinks the view of the bad guy's air defense system. The search and targeting radars in an IADS create a virtual picket fence. But the initial strike force of stealth attackers will slip through the gaps in that fence, positioned to destroy the defenses. One of the things we want to do is create a corridor or a safe entry point and exit point for our strikers to go in and to deliver that desired weapon. One of the ways we'll do that is by taking down the enemy defenses systematically. The F-35s and F-22s pierce the radar net undetected.